Okay, on problem number two on the pretest, it says solving exponential and logarithmic, logarithmic equations and converting between them. First one says uh, rewrite log base 3 of 9 equals x in exponential form and solve. Well, rewriting this in exponential form, we would say 3, the base, to the x equals 9. So 3 to the x equals 9. Is it rewritten? And uh, now, what's the solution to this? Well, 3 to the second power equals 9. Now, if you needed to solve something messier than that, let's say it was 3 uh, log base 3 of 10 equals x or whatever that you couldn't solve in your head like that, well, we could solve it on the uh, solver sheet. I'll go ahead and solve the one that's there, and we'd say equals log parentheses. Now, we say right underneath it says number comma base. Well, the number that we're taking uh, the log of is 9 comma the base is 3 close parentheses and hit uh, enter and well that pretty much does it right there too that's the answer let's go on here um, and so logarithmic form is the best way to answer that because it brings the variable out of the exponent next what problem says rewrite log base three log of three equals two x minus one now if you see log without a subscript written on there then the base is assumed to be ten so rewriting this it would be ten raised to the two x minus one equals three but again the best way to solve this problem is in this logarithmic form because the uh, exponent is not up in the uh, well the variable is not up in the exponent when you have it in logarithmic form so we would just say log of three and we can do that by right here type in equals log of 3. Now the base is 10 and the base is assumed to be 10 if you don't put it in. So I can just say equals log of 3 and then over here was the other side of that equation which is equals 2 times uh, x minus 1. Hit enter, click solve and we get 0.74. And if you think about that, 0.74 should be the right answer because you don't need to raise 10 to very high power to get 3. Uh, let's see what else we have here now. Uh, rewrite 5e raised to the negative t plus 3 equals 10 in logarithmic form and solve. Well, before we can write it in logarithmic form, we got to get rid of this 5 here. So we'll divide both sides by 5 to get e to the negative t plus 3 equals 2. 10 divided by 5 is 2. Now we can rewrite it in logarithmic form, and we get the natural log of 2, because the base is e, natural log of 2, equals negative t plus 3. And actually, this would be the best way to solve this problem. So let's go to the solver sheet and type in equals natural log of 2 right there. And on the other side, we'll type in equals negative x plus 3. Hit enter. Click solve. And we get 2.31, it looks like, 2.31. And that does it with that problem. Now, 3a says, uh, what is the location of the vertical asymptote for the function right here? Well, you can find your uh, vertical asymptote by setting what's in the parentheses after your log equal to 0. If you set 2x plus 5 equal to 0, you get 2x equals negative 5, or x equals negative 5 halves, which is the same as negative 2.5. So this has a vertical asymptote at negative 2.5. You could always graph it on the logarithmic sheet up in this area on the right hand side of the sheet is where you could graph it and uh, we would we would be putting in to this problem the a is 3 the b uh, the base would be e and we could leave the e there or do equals exp 1 for e and it'll put that number in there for us the c is uh, 2 The D is 5, and the E was uh, 2. And there's the graph. Where's the vertical asymptote? At negative 2.5. And we could graph this thing, let's say, from negative 3 to uh, 4 or so, just real low values. And you can see that here's where the vertical asymptote is. Okay. On this problem, it says, what is the location of the horizontal asymptote? Well, this plus 2 just shifts the horizontal asymptote up 2 units. So this is actually exponential decay because the exponent, the coefficient in front of the exponent is negative. It's exponential decay, and it looks like we have a horizontal asymptote at 2, but we could double-check that by graphing it on the exponential sheet. 
and we'd have to scroll a little bit here to our right where we can type in something like this. Uh, it has a 5 and an E on it, and this isn't quite enough up in the exponent. So, uh, and this isn't enough on the base. But right here, this will do it. Hold it right back here. So, let me zoom up on this a little bit so you can see it better. We're right here in this area. The A was 5. The E is already in there. The B was negative 2. The C was 3. And the D, the number at the end is 2. What's the horizontal asymptote? 2. And you can see it's exponential decay there. Okay, on problem 4 it says the population P of a city is given by this exponential function right here where T is the time in years and T equals 0 is 1990. According to the model, how many years after 1990 will it take until the population is 250,000? Gives you the exponential function. Just go to the exponential sheet, put in your coefficients, which are for your A, your 240,360, and for your B, it's 0 0.012. It's telling you a population, that's your Y value, so just substitute in 250,000 for Y, and we get the answer right here of 3.28 years rounded to the nearest hundredth. Now, if anything's ever on your way, in your way over here, you can always just move it out of the way. If you wanted to see the gra gra graph, you could click the clear the data points button, but uh, I think that's all we really need to do with that problem. On problem number five, it says the following information is on the growth of the internet. It gives you years. T equals zero is 1990, so we really, we'll need to uh, type in three, four, five, six, seven, eight for your X's. And here's your internet domain names. We're supposed to find the exponential curve of best fit, so do, do some modeling. Uh, according to this model, how many years after 1990 will there be this many 4 million internet domain names and how long does it take to double? Well, let's go ahead and do this problem. I copied and pasted special as text this uh, data in here, and then I made these 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then I click this button, and I'll get the um, exponential function of best fit, and it'll take it just a second to do that. Okay, and it gets that equation for you, and it plots it over here, and let's see, some of the th questions that it asked was uh, find the exponential function of best fit. Well, we have it right here. Uh, according to your model, how many years after 90, 1990 until there's 4 million internet domain names? So I just typed in 4 million there, and I get 9.045 years after 1990. And then how long does it take to double? We'll put 0 in for x, and that tells you, according to this model, how many there were in 1990, the initial amount. And then type in here equals 2 times this amount. Hit enter. And there you go. It doubles, according to this model, every 0.897 of a year. Now, if it says how long does it take to go up to 30% 30 per, 30 more than what it was, or how long does it take to increase by 30% or 20% or whatever, you still type 0 in for x. You get the amount here. And then here, type in equals, let's say it goes up by 30%. We would type in 1.3 times this amount. And that would tell me what 30% more of that number is, and that would tell me how long it takes to get there. But again, this problem was actually doubling, so it's equal two times uh, this value. And again, the answer is 0 0.89. Okay, on this problem, it's talking about the growth of a baby, and this is its height, and this is how old it is, and once you get the logarithmic function of best fit, so I copied this data and pasted it special as text into the logarithmic sheet. I click this button and I get the logarithmic equation of best fit. So there it is. Now part B says uh, how tall will the baby be when it's 60 months old? So just type in 60 for the X and you get the answer right here, 39.94. When will the baby have a height of 36 inches is what uh, part C says. And so I type 36 in here and I get when he is 29.67 months old. Now. The last couple uh, questions on this video that I'm going to do, I'll finish it up later with the other one, but how many horizontal and vertical asymptotes do exponential functions have? Exponential functions have one horizontal asymptote, and it's on the left if it's exponential growth, and it's on the right if it's exponential decay. Horizontal and uh, vertical asymptotes for a logarithmic function, they have a vertical asymptote, no horizontal asymptote, and logistic equations or functions have two horizontal asymptotes and no vertical asymptote, and we'll pick it up with eight in the next video.